The University of Detroit Mercy presents another brand new episode of Ask the Professor, the radio show on which you match wits with the University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. Today's program was recorded using Zoom video conferencing technology. The University Tower chimes ring in another session of Ask the Professor, the show on which you match wits with the University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. I'm your host, Matt Mayo, and let me introduce to you our panel for today. What more can I say? You can see his face. It's Professor Jeff Boats. Hey, how's it going? It's a it's a rare treat to see your face. Yeah, usually uh, when you record on Fridays, I usually have kid shepherding duties, you know, after school. But uh, us coming down with COVID and then snow apocalypse, uh, you know, not not good things, but good in the sense that I get to be here. Nice, very nice, nice to have you. How are you feeling? Yes. Much better. Good. 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 You're you're, good. you're no longer lupine or anything like that. <laughs> We'll let the beard fool you. It's, okay. Good. It is a full moon out there. <laughs> that's right. No, that's right. The February moon. I believe that's the snow moon, if I remember my farmer's almanac correctly. It is this year. That's right. Continuing around the horn. And why not? Because usually it's when he eats or drinks something that I call his name. It's Professor Dan Maggio. <laughs> Hi, Matt. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I swear. It's just the way things sort of lay out in the script. Just, and then just tea. I'm not eating anything today. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we'll let it fly then. What's what did, been going on, Dan? So did you get the expected 12 to 18 inches on your side of Berkeley or was my <laughs> side of Berkeley spared? You know, Dave lives literally just a few hundred feet away from me. He got like three feet and we oh, only wow. got like six inches. Well, the Hold meteorologist up. will be very happy to to uh to hear from dave well i i was i was accumulating from the neighbors that's also i, mean, oh, yeah. I, I was stockpiling carting it over right yes. exactly <laughs> um we're joined today by professor mara Livesey, who has quite a tale to tell about kitchen renovation oh yes just converting this drab old kitchen into a new bright white clean space mm. so awesome nice. can i come over and cook when you <laughs> can i come over and eat Yes, oh. <laughs> but only if you clean afterwards. Oh, oh. yeah, exactly. Ah, hundred percent. That's that's Dan's thing. He does that all the time. The price of admission is high over at the Lindsay household. <laughs> he does. Yes, it be. <laughs> what did you say the other day about? Um, like we're doing something very blank. We're having a white kitchen. How did you do? What was the modifier you used? Very trendy. Very trendy. Okay. Okay. It's, it's very trendy now to have like the butcher block, the white cabinets, the white backsplash. The white sure. tile? Sure. White tile. Bingo. All around. And someone who apparently wants to use your kitchen and is already thinking about it, it's Professor mm -hmm. Beth Oljar. Hi. It was pretty cool. You had your uh, cat right behind you on the back she of the is... chair, like a Bond villain a, a few minutes ago there. Yes, she is currently standing. Uh, right on my lap. She made a, a cameo appearance in Symbolic Logic this morning. Nice. Um, so yeah, the students were happy to see her. That's awesome. You're just a little ham, aren't you? <laughs> hey, quit, quit, quit talking about Matt like that. I'm a little. Oh, 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 oh what a I cutie! Am. What a cutie! Okay. Oh. Uh, professor Stephen Manning is joining us here today. Slightly different background. Same professor thinking of what it would take me to lift the dog up like Beth just <laughs> <laughs> Allie weighs like eight pounds. I mean, you know, and I'm sure uh, Kenai weighs like 85 or yeah, 90. 80, 80 or 85. Yep. Oh my gosh. The only one I know that loves this weather. Boy, he loves romping in the snow. Yeah. Well, it's in his DNA. Literally. Uh, recently about baseball. Thrilled mm. that David Ortiz was uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame on the first chance. Yeah, right. and also good news: uh, two of our least favorite baseball players from the past were denied on their tenth and final, let's hope, attempt. Right. So that's good news. That's right. Oh. Baseball, baseball. Who are they? Could you? Could Baseball labor situation does not look good because I'm supposed to be at a baseball game, Cactus League game in a couple of weeks in the uh -oh. Phoenix area. So I'm uh -oh. hoping they get this done so I can spend 
one afternoon at least in the uh, in the sun watching baseball. But good luck. Maybe good not. Luck. Yeah, good luck. Doesn't sound good so far. Good They've day. actually called it's for uh, scale and Mesa. Hope it gets solved, resolved too. Yes. Yeah. The owners have asked for uh, federal mediation. I understand. Yeah. Right. So right. Hopefully right. that will. We all know the joke about uh, we need to get something done. Let's uh, bring in Congress. Let's see how that goes. It's, <laughs> it's going to be great. Well, I know a whole lot of old baseball players in Detroit who'd love to, to play in Tiger Stadium if uh, the Tigers won't. Yeah, that's right. Um, Professor Jim Tubbs is here with us today, sort of this half moon um, or maybe like rising setting sun uh, shape behind <laughs> you. But you are in a different place, aren't you, Jim? Yes, I am. I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona. That's great. <laughs> this is the power of Ask the Professor. I mean, we could be That's anywhere right. now. You could be in, in Bali right now. Not with Bali the cat, but, you know, in <laughs> Bali. And well, take I your precious time. Bali, but I will. Visit us. Yes. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Jim looks like he's like sitting back on a four-poster bed right about now. I mean, geez. it is. It's, it's well, not four-poster, but it is a bed. That it's clearly crazy. is the headboard of a bed. That is it. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's just an awesome looking throne, you know. Thank you. It's a great it shape. <laughs> yeah. I'm adding a crown to you any minute, Jim. Yeah, you need a crown. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. TR, Those, of course, are the uh, snarky tones of Professor Dave Chow. Pleasure to be here, as always. Thanks for drawing crowns on all of us, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy enough to do. Nothing I can't do in Photoshop. A little copy and pasting. So That's right. We're uh, lucky to be joined by longtime panelists now retired and living in the great state of Arizona, Diane Manica. Thanks for joining us, Diane. Yeah, thank you so hey. much for having me. It's good to nice see you. Hey, everyone. Everything going well for you? Très bien. <laughs> Couldn't oh. be better. Retirement is wonderful. Excellent. Hey, I mean, come on. Oh, check, check out. I mean, Diane's even got a, you know, what, what's that little statuette, you know, behind you over there? Come on, you want you want a trophy already in retirement? No, 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 no. that's a um, a, re a, a depiction of me on the golf course. Oh, oh. oh. I see the resemblance. Oh my gosh! And a straighter, a straighter driver of the golf ball, I have never met. That's right. Every <laughs> tee shot, far, but it goes every tee shot straight. <laughs> the, the, the rough is unknown to uh, no such Canada. thing. When we That's were cool. getting uh, started today, someone mentioned that we had a full house, and we're very, very honored to also have a guest panelist. We have the returning sister, Erin McDonald. Hey, hello. How's it going? Um, right before, it's good. Right before I came um, to join you all this afternoon, I was looking at my handy little desk book here of nuns having fun. <laughs> and I noticed that there is no pages or chapters in here about nuns recording podcasts. Oh, so my gosh. I'm hoping we'll have to that, correct we, can, that we, yeah, this is what we're going to do today. Okay. We got nuns you playing basketball. We got nuns sledding we got we got nuns dancing oh my God. we obviously we need, need, a, blog, Aaron. We need a second edition <laughs> yeah we need a second edition of the book with 100 percent with this in it absolutely Your second yeah. edition playing tug of war we got all kinds of <laughs> man <laughs> that's pitiful God, sister Aaron, I've, I've already got someone lined up to write the foreword Okay. Professor Dave Chow. Oh, no. Oh, crap. <laughs> Another forward I got to write. <laughs> Jeez. Sounds, oh, my gosh. Great. And this sounds like more fun than walking on water. I, well, nice. I think you could oh. definitely top nuns play, playing tug of war. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try my best today, okay? Awesome. Hey, folks, you know how it goes. This is a program. You can send us questions regarding anything. If you stump the panel, you win a prize. If you don't stump the panel, we'll send you a prize too. You can send us the questions in a number of ways, emailing us at atp at udmercy.edu. You can find us on Facebook or Instagram, or listen on your favorite smart speaker by asking it to play Ask the Professor at University of Detroit Mercy. So here we go into the great unknown. Dear professors, no imponderables this time around. We're slowly compiling that list though. This task is a little more involved than hitting the random button on Wikipedia. 
In the meantime, we've come up with a list of 20 varied questions to keep the panelists challenged. We sincerely hope you'll use them and enjoy them as much fun as we have compiling them. As always, warmest greetings from Valencia, California. Frank, Frank. and the family Burroughs. Yes. Hey. Thanks for sending us questions, Frank. He always has such good kind of miscellaneous grab bags of questions. Absolutely. That he sends us. He actually it's... makes us think. It hurts. <laughs> I'm looking at all these faces. Um, my students on my laptop tell me that here. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I wonder if we can get through this set and have everybody uh, knock one of these out of the park. That's the, the best day is when everybody's hitting. We need a laugher here. So stay engaged and get over the pandemic and the weather and winter mm -hmm. and all that. So I hope that the theme is nuns playing tug of war. <laughs> <laughs> tug of war. Yeah. Right. 100 questions <laughs> all the champion <laughs> orders oh my gosh what are the two biggest consumers of the gas helium in all the world this is interesting is that are they countries is that balloons or uh, objects are they items? Items? like yeah. what are they used for yeah so so here's the thing the first thing I heard was Beth saying countries. And the next thing I heard was Mara <laughs> saying balloons. And basically you got it on the first try. Oh. Because the first uh, biggest consumer of helium is the United States government. So for the record, yeah. you need a uh, helium, liquid helium to be able to run superconducting magnets. So there's all sorts yeah. of things you can do with that. Okay. Number two, based on total volume is the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade balloons. So I'm giving you full credit. Wow. Wow. And third is dentists. <laughs> Maybe. Dental balloons, Stephen. Dental balloons. I was just Part guessing. Yeah, where, where, where's Party City in all of this? You know, I mean. Yeah, they would have to be way up there. Yeah. I don't want to bring things down, you know, too far. But I believe that every single person on this call will live to see the end of helium being used for decorative balloons. It is too important to the superconducting magnets that do yeah. chemistry work and MRI. And we cannot, we just need to make a decision to not use them for frivolous purposes. And you'll see a lot of folks now just feeling, filling balloons with air and putting them on the end of long flexible sticks. So it looks like they're floating. Yeah. So uh, we'll just fill it with hydrogen. hydrogen. Yeah, you fill it with, yeah, hydrogen, you know, like. <laughs> Just that. <laughs> That's right. The what human. could go wrong? You imply and then take them all to a <laughs> smokers convention. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. So I'm I'm checking Beth and, and Mara off the list. I mean, you can't just sit back oh. and smoke a cigar, but you're you're in. You're already <laughs> oh, damn. Well, okay. Speaking I have to come of, up with another plan. <laughs> speaking of delayed uh, opening ceremonies, how many winter Olympic gold medals has the country of Iceland won? Ooh. Ooh. Eight. Three and a half. One. Right. I could do a half now. <laughs> like, it was a tie. Yeah. You yeah. yeah. tied with Finland. It's either zero or one. So I'll go yeah, I was going to say one. I'm going down uh, to the bottom of my screen, and the great Professor Dan Maggio hit it right out of the park. They've never won a gold medal. Oh, they never have. Oh. 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 That's They've won sad. many silvers well, and bronzes. Years. I but mean, no gold. Yep. Not yet. Not the day yet. is young. The day is young. The week is young. Yes. Mm -hmm. What? Oh, wow. The, I actually read this question ahead of time. I know that uh, it's hard to believe, but this one really made me scratch my head. What Pixar movie? So they're all animated, right? right. Was the first that featured animated humans? Up has the main Fred Willard. Oh, it's the Incredible. Incredibles, right? This one goes to Dave. Yeah, it's the Incredibles as wow. animated what? humans. Yes. Yeah. Animated humans. With Edna Mode, truly one of the world's greatest characters mm -hmm. of all time. Edna yeah. Mode, yes. Very, very funny. Very, very funny. What country contains the world's largest okay this is definitely the wikipedia random button what country contains the world's largest cashew tree brazil it's brazil you got oh. it Steve. <laughs> wow. oh my that's what i was gonna guess too i 
Yeah. You know, Ross this is um cross my name off the list. I gotta go watch it. He's <laughs> gotta you go make a your, martini. You turn off your <laughs> screen though. Now I'm feeling pressure. Like I'm gonna be the last nun standing. That's oh stop. Oh. stop. Sister <laughs> Aaron, you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> you know what um what it sounds like though? Um it says that it covers eighty thousand square feet, and it feels just a little bit like you know, the James Cameron, the avatar thing. Wow. There's yes. that yeah. one fungus that takes up three, you know, Ooh. counties or something like that. It's just this root network that's so big that, uh, you know. Interesting. Did you know that cashews come from a fruit? According to Welsh folklore, this is just the most wonderful, wonderful mind picture of the well, well, we have a mcdonald here so i mean that's close i know no, no, no pressure aaron according no pressure. to welsh folklore what did tiny little fairies ride into battle couldn't have been the welsh dragon i'm guessing Hello? not a dragon unicorns what was that aaron um beer no, <laughs> no, 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 no. partial credit partial credit. Uh, butterflies blackbirds Whiskey, bunnies, a birds? deer, Clubs. what like like mockingbirds or? I mean, you're Whistle in the pigs. wheelhouse, oh. and I'm afraid to to give it away because it it really is a wonderful, wonderful mental picture. Um, a human, Rats. okay, Arabs. and then a horse. So these would be tiny people riding something tiny, and it is a a breed of animal that would be known to be from Wales. It's not a satyr. That sound. Mm-mm. No, no. What? what like okay. uh, no, well, unicorn? Of animal from. Corkies. Yeah. <laughs> so for the record, the correct response goes to Professor Tubbs. It's corgis. Yes, they oh, ride oh, corgis corgi. into battle. Oh. So that's why the queen keeps them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> for her fairies to ride into battle. For her army of fairies. <laughs> it, it's, it's her secret service that we don't know about. Oh my god. But the cold stream guards do in their off time is actually, you know, keep bride herd on whales with the little corgis. I think I've mentioned this before. My kids watched a cartoon a long time ago where the secret to the kingdom of the corgis liberation was just across this three feet deep river. And the kids are asking them, How come you haven't gone across the river and like solved all your problems? It's like we can't we go through three feet of water. Like, we'll all die. Like, what's your problem? <laughs> oh, how many times? This is a classic, but it's wonderful. How many times was the infamous F-bomb dropped in the movie that used it the most of all, The Wolf of Wall Street? Oh, uh, 175. Like 400 times or something like that? Even Jeff is a little low. Wow. <laughs> 523. 800. So, 718. Uh, I, I think that I heard Mara get pretty close, but she went over. So if this was like, you know, oh, price yeah. right style, it's 506 times in that movie. Wow. Wait, most that, on record. That was a two hour movie, right? It's not even that good of a movie. Yeah. I didn't particularly <laughs> like it. I mean, Beth, you're right. If you want to see people drop the F-bomb that much, it better be a good movie, right? I mean, or show up in one of my lectures. I mean, you know, I mean. I guess the real question would be how many times per scene in that movie? Oh, okay. It it's like a per capita. Yeah. Yeah. What famous game show host produced the Beatles 64 and 65 live concerts at the Hollywood wow. Bowl? Mm-hmm. Beth? <laughs> <laughs> um game oh, show host yeah dick clark Herb griffin yeah i was gonna say dick clark sounds right no bob barker Mm-mm. jack welch the price Mike, is uh, Mike martindale Mike jim Lang? Lang? <laughs> jack somebody the um Monty Hall. match game you've He's like literally off. hit every single person i can think of except for the person who was um their first name is bob but it's not bob barker who banks mm-hmm. Bob Eubanks. Bob, Bob Eubanks. Eubanks. Oh. Wow. Well, was he the dating was he a guy. known uh, producer? Apparently, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Was it a I good guess... album, Beth? <laughs> uh, I, I sure there are recordings of it. I don't. Ha- I know Sigourney Weaver was in that. Was at that concert. Hmm. That's right. Because right. she's in hard, uh, not hard days, not eight days a week, 
right? Yep. The movie about their touring years and mm -hmm. she and Whoopi Goldberg both, right? Because they both attended um, those, well, Sigourney in Los Angeles and Whoopi in New York. Hey. Yeah. So professors, it's a relatively um, esoteric piece of movie trivia that in the scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark, where the Saracen appears and wields his giant sword and Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones basically just shoots him dead on the spot and moves on. Totally that it's Because almost cool. everybody on the movie had severe gastrointestinal distress due to a bad catering job. Uh -oh. One person on the movie never got sick. Do you know who it was Welcome and why? Your voice messaging system. Please enter uh -huh. your passcode. Oh, was that? Um, Karen Allen? No. Uh, With all it? due respect to Karen Allen and Harrison Ford, it was someone a little more important than both of those people. Good luck. The little yeah. monkey? The, the monkey, Bella. The monkey. Um, the director? It was the director. Yeah. Spielberg? Spielberg. Spielberg. Oh, yes. Wow. And, and this is... Because crazy. he drank so much along with the meal <laughs> that it killed the germs. He sterilized every meal with well, alcohol. That's the reason the the reason that that scene plays that way because Harrison Ford. I mean, the you know it was baking heat, uh, and Harrison Ford just got so sort of tired, and that he decided, I think, kind of on the spur of the moment, to just you know pull out the gun and, and shoot him, and it ended up in the movie that way. Yep, mm -hmm. that's right. Because it worked. So the real reason why Spielberg did not take any of the catered food is, I mean, it's sometimes you just it wasn't really kosher. Scratch your head. He was going through a phase where the only thing he would eat was SpaghettiOs, and he had them shipped in independently. Uh, oh and no! That's what he was eating. And that didn't make him sick. <laughs> oh no! I wish I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, no. Where, where did they shoot that? You know, the most Tunisia. It was Tunisia. Tunisia. Yeah. There's no Tunisia spaghettios. Apparently not. No. I'm just really glad he's actually one of America's best directors, so I don't have to think about the spaghettios thing. I mean, really, <laughs> what a letdown. Oh my God. Chef Boyardee and Spielberg. Wow. I mean, if I thought the answer was going to be something like it wasn't kosher, you know, mm, mm -hmm. right? Which sure. would have made sense, but or he had his own chef or something like that, you know. I mean, right, right. Okay, <laughs> Sister Aaron, I'm going right to you on this one. Come on, you can do it. Come on. All right. <laughs> Game face. In the year 1962. We're all going to cross our. Yes, <laughs> we're going to say it our ale Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Ale Mary's is a restaurant in downtown Royal Oak, too. Cool. Great. In the name. year 1962, Sister Aaron, oh, what was Jesus. the average cost in the United States of a color TV? Oh. You should be able to do this mathematically. Yes. Well, mathematics happens to be one of my strong suits. So uh, let or, me or, do and, my and, mental and calculation. And color television, right? For inflation. Um, <laughs> and since that was pre-Vatican II, clearly it must have cost $31. Mm, no, a a little low. Low. oh I'm, i don't know uh let's go with uh 47 dollars. it's a little low oh 100 dollars. color tv is 61 what, what size been more? is the tv because i think that makes a big difference yeah 25 i'd say Do what have a size remote? is the tv, TV i don't have that kind back. of data oh. 19 inch well out of fairness the sister i think she deserves to know yes Come on. i agree i'm, I'm <laughs> wait a minute what Diane, weren't you weren't you 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 know U of D back then during, <laughs> during the transition of color? She was in school then. Yeah. No days. <laughs> well, cool. I say ninety five dollars. If colors were new, they would have been rather expensive. I would have. I'd say between one and two hundred dollars. Yeah. In sixty two. Yeah. So uh, this is the first one that I think we've dropped the ball on. It says oh. here that it would have come in average. At about four hundred dollars. I mean, it's brand oh, new. Wow. Jim oh. was closest. Jim was closest. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's expensive for back then. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna have to go back high. to math class. What do I know? I'm gonna have to go Inflation. back to black and white. Oh. Inflation adjusted. That's about. Yeah, I was too today. busy listening to, to Johnny Mattress to pay. <laughs> oh yes. yes no, no, she, she was too too busy taking notes for the engineering students, wasn't she? 
I was. <laughs> Jeff, uh, what was the adjusted for inflation? That, that's probably somewhere in the ballpark of five thousand dollars today. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a really expensive TV in twenty twenty two. So yeah. Wow. Mm. If you had my calculator, I could have figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, why my, folks. That's why my dad didn't buy one until about 2016, I think. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Well, well, that's a bit late. If there was a phone a friend <laughs> option, I could have called one of my nuns and asked. You could have. <laughs> I'm sure they would know <laughs> to the penny. <laughs> Professors, in what state do you find the cities of pigeon, peacock, mastodon, and whitefish? Michigan uh, has pigeon. Arkansas. Michigan. It's the great Oregon. state of Michigan, Indiana. folks. I'm just oh, stopping okay. you all right there. It's the great yeah. state of Michigan. Oh, yes. uh, it had to be somewhere around here because Mastodon mm -hmm. actually had them. That's right. That's, that's right. the uh, that's the ma school mascot of IPFW. Right? That's I'm right. The Mastodons. Hmm. That's right. Hmm. And the pigeon is in the thumb. The pigeon is. Mm -hmm. Oh right. Yeah. 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 Pigeon. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if any other states have a hell. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all Michigan is held to other states. So, you know. Oregon has Oregon has a town named Boring, mm -hmm. and a town named Milton Freewater. Oh, nice! I am not kidding. Who is Milton Freewater? I have no idea. Oh, been an early, maybe an early settler. Probably. Man, that's 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 some staying it's power. Ready to drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That sounded suspiciously like the number one question we get asked by people who didn't grow up in the Detroit area. Who is this John R. guy and what's his <laughs> deal? You know? yeah. who, who is it? I didn't grow up here. Yeah, John R. Williams was one of the first mayors of the city. Of oh, OK. So, mm -hmm. yep. I mean, I figured it was, you know, obviously some local of import, but I hadn't ever some asked. Some import, yeah. Professors, there is only one element on the periodic table named after a U.S. state. What is it? Indium. Californium? Oh, you're it's right. Californium. Oh, yeah. And for the oh, record. Is that, real, is that a real element? Yes, it is. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, based oh. on the timing of Frank's questions, it's a little bit outdated. There's actually mm. a second one that was just added two years ago. Do you know what that one is? Uh, Ohio. Ohio. Rhode Island, Rhode Island, New Jersey. -um. <laughs> Keep trying. Ten Tennessee, New Yorkium. It's uh, Carolina. it's actually based on Tennessee. The name of the element is Tennessee. Tennessee. Oh, uh -huh. oh. okay. Classy. What were the two films that got Tom Hanks his consecutive Best Actor Oscars? Philadelphia, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. and, and, uh, and Fort Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. Gump. Oh, yep, Forrest right. Gump. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let's see here. What state did Representative Geraldine Ferraro serve? New York. New York. Yep, she was a New Yorker. See, now suddenly we're just getting in the groove and everything's just getting totally nuts. Yeah, off here. we're grooving. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. The warm ups are done. <laughs> Where would somebody find an airport with the call letters N Z I R? N Z I R. New Zealand. It's not New Zealand. That's a, uh, yeah, that makes sense. N-Z-I-R. 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 You're looking for a country or a city? Nazareth, Israel? You know what the problem is? I can't say that I'm looking for a country, and that's the biggest hint I can give you. Is it fictional? No. Oh. We live is in it, a weird is it on a Is it like on a ship or something? No, that's a good guess, though. Or top of a hotel? Uh, is it on a continent that doesn't contain countries? Yes, oh. Antarctica. Antarctica. It's oh. an Antarctic oh. airport. Sneaky, sneaky. Antarctic airport. Wow. Yes. He's scientist. I wonder why it had four call letters instead of three. Right. That's weird. <laughs> I just, it's between, it's like I was trying to think, you know, nobody, no country has claim to antarctica and i think that that's like a un principle and then immediately i looked at beth and i was like you know the student saying doesn't the moon belong to the united states oh my god matt i am not what? i i literally i was on um a website a place that i shop at fairly often and there's a book called it's a child's book called nobody owns the moon Oh, I love and it. I, I very nearly text. Well, it actually doesn't have anything to do with the moon, but I almost texted you like, you'll never believe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I saw Sister Aaron's face, by the way. Um, I'll just tell you some other time about a conversation I once had with the students. <laughs> Doesn't the moon belong to the United States? Like, there's so many things wrong with that statement. We were there first. That's all. I mean, well, we do have a a, a strong track record for colonization. So, yeah, that's true. That is true. Oh, right. Absolutely true. Our flag Um, is there. Come on. Yes. Yes. (laughs) We have, uh, um, oh, uh, the voice of God is telling me, according to the website answers.com, there was once a hell California. Oh, Oh, interesting. Was once a hell. Where did it go? If it was already hell, I believe it got renamed. Is what it's it says. Oh, no. Story now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Arizona, got, Arizona it absorbed got, it. Oh, it got named that during the gold rush. I bet. Right. I, I should uh, qualify, by the way, just to mine. You know, minoritize the uh, the blasphemy that when we're in the studio. Uh, when Michael Jason's baritone echoes in the studio, it does sort of sound like it's coming from nowhere. So we nickname it the voice of God. It wasn't actually um, the almighty who gave me that information, mm. at least not directly. Yeah, because I know that's what Aaron was thinking, sure was. <laughs> that God was talking directly to you, Matt. And <laughs> only you. I Today's the day I give you the answer to this question. The rest of the, your life, you're on your own. This is your reward for being a good Catholic, right? Come God on. is going to speak to you directly on the show. Oh, okay, you, let, gotta, let, you need a background that puts a halo. Oh, oh great. Now I got to put a halo. I got a crown on Jim. And I got to put a halo on Matt. Yep. We got oh, work geez. to you. One more question, professors. You pretty much have aced every one of these except for uh, one. So we're in really, really good shape, no matter what grading rubric you use. <laughs> what year was it that Cape Canaveral became Cape Kennedy. 64. I mean, you're close enough, Jim. It says actually it was right after. It was Thanksgiving of 63. Does anybody remember what happened after the president made that name change? That that he was told that it it couldn't be because it was a geographic feature that already had a name. They could name the the, uh, missile uh, launch site, but not the peninsula. Right, exactly. They changed it right back, basically, is, is what happened. So huh. uh, interesting twists of nomenclature. And I'm so sorry, professors. We had so much fun that the time has come for us to say goodbye, Sister Aaron. Bye. <laughs> Dave. See ya. Jim. Bye. Stephen. Goodbye. Beth. Goodbye. Diane. Adios. Mara. Goodbye. Dan. Goodbye. And Jeff. Time to blast off. (laughs) And now these words from University of Detroit Mercy. Ask the Professor is transcribed in, you know, all of our homes, but usually it's in the Briggs Building in the Department of Communication Studies in the College of Liberal Arts and Education at University of Detroit Mercy's McNichols campus. Ask the Professor is produced and technically directed by Michael Jason and Brian Masonville, and our executive producer is Professor Jason Roach. Until next week, I'm your host, Matt Mayo.